what I want to do in this video is to give you an intuitive sense of how a how a a a market for currencies would actually work. And it's it's very non-intuitive for a lot of people because we're going to be talking about currencies becoming more expense or uh, more expensive or cheaper or the price of a currency in terms of another one. And what I want to do is give you a very intuitive feel for that. So let's say we're well, just you know because this is uh, on a, it's a hot topic right now. Let's just make the two currencies the Chinese renminbi and the U.S. dollar. And the unit ex of exchange in China is a little confusing because sometimes they use the word renminbi, sometimes the word yuan. The yuan is the unit of the renminbi. So let's say right now, let's say right now, if I were to just go on some website, and this is not the ex actual exchange rate right now, but let's say right now the quoted exchange rate is ten. 10 won, 10 won per US dollar. 10 won is equal to 1, 1 US dollar. And every time I say dollar in this video, I'm referring to the US dollar is equal to 1 US dollar. And I think this makes sense to a lot of people. If I have $1, I want to convert it to 1. I get 10 of them. If I have 10 won, I want to convert it to dollars. Someone's going to give me a dollar for it. Now let's imagine a situation, and in the next few videos, I'll construct actual trade trade uh, imbalances where this would actually happen. But let's say we live in a reality where there are 1,000. So let's say you know someone has 1,000 won. So let's say that this person right here, let's say that this person right here has 1,000 won. Let me write over here. Has has 1,000 won and wants to convert to dollars and wants to convert convert to dollars. Now let's say on this side, and if we just superficially looked at this thousand won and looked at the quoted rate, we'd say, hey, that thousand won, you divide, you get ten won per dollar, so that should be a hundred dollars at the quoted rate. But let's say you have two other actors over here, and obviously these markets involve many, many more than just three people, but this will help us simplify or at least understand how these exchange rates would work. Let's say that this person right here, let's say that this person right here with the mustache, Let's say that this person right over there, and, and maybe a hat as well. Let's say that he has, let's say that he has, let's say that he has fifty dollars. Let me put. Let's say he has a hundred dollars. Has a hundred dollars. Has hundred dollars. That that he needs to convert. Convert to. Juan. Maybe he wants to buy some Chinese goods. Maybe he's a Chinese factory owner who sold his goods in the US for hundred dollars and now he needs to convert it back to Juan to pay his employees or pay his own mortgage or who knows what. And let's say that there's another person. Let's say that there's another character over here. There's another character over here. And let's say that she also let's say that she also has let's say that she also has Let's say that she has a hundred dollars that that need need to be converted converted into one. So net net, what's happening here? What's the total demand to convert one into dollars and dollars into one? Well, if you look at the whole market, you have two hundred dollars that need to be converted into one. So let me write this down. We have a situation where two hundred dollars Two hundred dollars need to be converted into one, and then to kind of off the the on the other side of that transaction, we have one thousand won need to be converted into dollars. So now we have one thousand won. One thousand won need to be converted into dollars. And for simplicity, these are the only actors. These this they are representing the entire market. Although as we know, the entire, you know, in currency markets especially there's there's thousands or even millions of actors actively uh, participating in them. So what's going to happen? All of these people might just go on the the, the internet and look up the 
current exchange rate, or the one the, the last exchange that occurred, and said, hey, you know what? Uh, me over here, this $100, I should be able to convert it into 1,000 won. But she also says, I should be able to convert this $100 into 1,000 won. So they collectively think that that $200 can be converted into 2,000 won. So I'll put this in question marks. So will they be able to convert this into 2,000 won? Into 2,000 won. And on this person over here, you know, he's saying, well, you know, just at the current exchange rate, maybe I'll be able to get, maybe I'll be able to get, uh, for my thousand won, maybe I'll get a hundred dollars. But everyone wants to maximize the amount of the other currency they get for obvious reasons. They want to maximize the amount of money they get. Now, will these two people be able to convert their money into 2,000 won? Remember, what I said is this is the entire market. And it's a huge simplification. But there is this imbalance here, more dollars into won than won into dollars. Now, they won't be able to convert into 2,000 won because there's only 1,000 won that wants to be traded. There is only 1,000 won that wants to be traded. So you can imagine this guy over here, maybe he wants to do it slowly just to kind of see what the market is like. So let's say his first, he puts. Let's say he at first he puts 10 won up, essentially for bid. You could view it either way. You could say that maybe one of these people put a dollar up for bid, and this guy is bidding on that dollar in terms of won. Or this guy is putting won up for bid, and these guys are going to bid on it in terms of dollars. Either one. And, and that's why it's sometimes confusing with currencies, because you're buying another currency. But since this guy is more in demand, so this since this guy is more in demand, more more demand to simplify things. I'll make him the person that's kind of able to create a an auction type situation, which really what is what the markets are, are trying to do so that you can equalize supply and demand. So he might put out he might he might initially say, hey, you know what? I want to convert uh, I want to he's going to he has 100 won and he's going he wants to convert it. So he says, you know what? I'm willing to sell 100 won for $10. So let's say he sells 100 won for $10. So he sells 100, or offers, I should say. Offers, offers to sell 100, 100 won for $10. He just thinks that that's a fair offer price right over there. And that's this guy over here, this guy actually converting won into dollars. Well, what's going to happen? Well, one of these people is just going to jump at that. They say, oh, you know what? I think that's a fair price. And so let's say this woman right over here takes it. Then actually, both of them maybe have saw that offer to sell 100 won for $10. And they both try to click their mouse or however they're trying to make the transaction happening. But let's say she clicks her mouse a little faster, and she gets the transaction. So let's say that person, let's call this person, let's call this person B, and this is person A, and this is person C. So person B. So person B accepts. Person B accepts. So two things happen just then. One is person C says, wow, that was pretty fast. Someone was very willing to take it for 10 won per US, per US dollar. And then this guy goes like, my god, I need to convert my money into won, but I wasn't able to. Someone else beat me to the punch. So this guy over here is not an idiot. He's like, hey, maybe people are willing to give me more dollars per won. So let's say that this guy right over here, this guy in orange, he then offers, he then offers, offers to sell, to sell, let's say he, he wants to sell 90 won, 90 won for $10. Notice, the price of the won has now go, gone up, or the price of the dollar has now gone down. Either one. Those are the symmetric statements. They mean the exact same thing. So all of a sudden, this person has a lot of dollars he needs to convert into won. So he accepts really fast. So person A accepts. And I'm doing a huge oversimplification, but it gives you the general idea to show you that this really is a market. So person. Person A accepts. All of a sudden, we have a new quoted exchange rate. We all of a sudden we have an exchange rate of what is this? Nine wands. So we have new, new quoted rate, or the transaction happens at nine wands, nine wands per per dollar. Now what's happening? And I think you see the dynamic that's going to happen. There's more dollars that need to be converted into one. 
than yuan that needs to be converted into dollars. So this guy, as he sees that there's a lot of demand to get his 1,000 yuan, he's going to keep offering fewer and fewer yuans per dollar. Or these guys are going to keep are going to start accepting fewer and fewer yuans for each of their dollars. So as this happens, as the price of the yuan will go up. Notice the price of the yuan went up here. It was 10 yuans per dollar. Now it's 9 yuans per dollar. Or you could say the price of the dollar has gone down. And this will just keep happening until all of them are able to get rid of their currency. And it's actually it's actually dependent. There's no mathematical formula to say what the clearing price is. It's actually dependent on how badly each of these people are willing to transact and really how good they are at gaming each other. But the general result here and this is the, the kind of what I really want you to get from this video is that because there's no there's no law in a in a market exchange rate mechanism that says this has to be the exchange rate we'll, we'll explore uh, how you can peg it in the future but there's nothing that says that this has to always be the case if there's more demand for one than dollars as we see in this example the price of the dollar will go down so the price of dollar will go down I'll do this in a this is the right price of dollar will go down and then which is the exact same thing which is which means the exact same thing as the price price of one will go up i really want you to internalize this will go up in terms of dollars price of dollars in terms of yuan will go down and this is this is the crux of foreign exchange if you can at least internalize these ideas and to understand that there really is this market out here based on the supply and demand of yuan over here the the demand for yuan is exceeding its supply so price will go up and, or you could view it the other way, the demand for dollars is below its supply, so the price will go down. Anyway, I'll let you think about that for a little bit. In the next video, we're going to apply this concept to see how this freely floating uh, exchange rate can help equalize or should help equalize trade imbalances in an ideal world.